A big focus of your job now is trying to develop and encourage entrepreneurship in the minority community, one that's dealing with all manner of mm -hmm. challenges, economic, social, yeah. whatever. Can you describe your role in that project and, and what leadership challenges that you're having to face in that role? Yeah, and I, I don't think it's personally a leadership challenge of mine. I think for the most part it's a personal, it's, it's, a, it's a leadership challenge for the urban community mm -hmm. throughout the United States of America. When you look at, at the state of business oftentimes in the urban community, specifically the African American community, and when you want to look at the economic development of the community, I think as you grow a community economically, there are so many benefits to producing safety, opportunities, all the things that you, if you look back at it, Lance, uh, uh, prior to 1964, there were appro approximately 600 plus African American owned grocery stores in the United States of America. Uh, today, uh, there are less than two. I think one or two right. uh, in the country, and that's because of the economic development of the communities. And so, where where economics uh, oftentimes go down, crime goes up. Mm -hmm. And so, you got to find a way that you look at other minority communities and take the Asian community, for example. A dollar will stay in the Asian community for 28 days. A dollar will stay in the Jewish community for 16 days. But it's unfortunate a dollar only stays in the African American community community for six hours. Wow. Well, it's hard to grow business when a dollar comes into your community and leaves that quick. Right. Prior to integration, though, a dollar would stay in the African-American community for four years. Well, that wow. was economic development. Mm -hmm. So what, when we look at the things that have happened in our communities over a period of time, you have to go back and analyze and say, man, what's really going on and how can we develop uh, the economics of a community and I think the first thing you have to do is start looking at the morality of the community and we're being a faith-based institution I can say that mm -hmm. I guess if I was working for the state I'd say social responsibility right. but I can say morality of the community because there's so many issues that we're dealing with in the uh, in, in, in the um, African-American community that were not relative to 1960 for example in 1960 80 percent of the families were led by men Mm -hmm. Today, only 30% are led by men. That's a problem. Right. Those are things that you have to find solutions for, but you're not going to fix them overnight, which have a negative impact on the community itself. Mm -hmm. You look and see where you have fathers in the homes, then you'll see the greater, imp the greater positive impact that you have on the community. Look at the literacy scores, look at the test scores, look at all those things that, that come about. And, and, and it's important that we look at the economic vi viability of each community based on the opportunity that present to the people who live there. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a a after looking at the morality and looking at offering education access with support that leads to success, then I realized you can have a good heart, um, you can address the, those moral issues in the community, but if you can't find a way to sustain yourself economically, you're going out of business. Mm -hmm. And so that's mm -hmm. when I decided that, okay, after 10 years of doing this, then I need to shift the focus because with the challenges that we had at Arkansas Baptist College, it was all financial relate, you know, it was right. all about finances. Right. And so if you can find a way to fix that problem, you usually can fix your other problem because you have resources to get what you need. Mm -hmm. And so I realized either you can struggle every year and just hope to get by, or you can become very strategic and find a, and put together a plan in place that can help, you know, solve the problems rather than having to go to somebody else and ask each year to be a problem solver. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how then do you start, it's, it's, a, it's a big challenge, how do you start then to put those pieces together? Are you looking for other leaders in your community to, to pull them together and then, and it's a question of getting money into the system Oh, absolutely. Too, I yeah, uh, yeah I, I think you have to look and say, okay, is our community value? Mm -hmm. You know, right now, today, December, uh, in, in December of 2016, we've had 39 homicides in Little Rock, mm -hmm. okay? That's a cost. Right. And if you look at, at where the homicides taking place, we know exactly where in most places that is concentrated in a sp specific area, mm -hmm. okay? To me, those, the issues of, of addressing the morality, education access, and, and economic development all tie into we're making Little Rock better by addressing those issues mm -hmm. that are really not being addressed in our community. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, we, you know, it's important that I not only see it to be important, but that the leaders of, of Little Rock see it to be important because 
if we truly want to move off being the 12th most dangerous place to live in the United States of America, this is going to be a problem that collectively we all need to be, in part, be a part of. So if we want to find other businesses to move here to Little Rock, then that they can say, hey, you know, we don't have to worry about the crime. You right. know, it, crime is very expensive right. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is provide a strategic leadership that, that number one, can help improve Little Rock through the foundation and Scott Ford Center. Okay, well, let me, go, let me go back a little bit then to, to when you became president of Arkansas mm -hmm. Baptist College in 2006. Uh, it was a crucial time for the college. Correct. Um, a time when I think the very survival of that mm -hmm. college might have been in doubt. What leadership skills did you have to call upon to take on those challenges and how did you go about meeting the early goals that you mm -hmm. had coming into that situation? I, I, I believe it or not, Lance, I thought it, it, that came from coaching, mm -hmm. that came from military, mm -hmm. you know, because I assessed the situation and I tried to, in coaching what I said, make first downs every week. Okay. Uh, you right. know, I believe inch by inch, life is a cinch, yard by yard, life is hard. We're gonna make some little progress and we're gonna show that progress, mm -hmm. you know. Even though we had a strategic plan, that we were gonna show little progress and, and said this is what we've accomplished. But the first thing I thought was most important thing that we had to reach out and touch human capital. That's mm -hmm. the thing, you know, investing in human capital is the most important thing a college can do. Well, we only had 150 plus students at the time, right. so it's hard for people to want to invest in a college when you have fewer students. Mm -hmm. So we had a very, very aggressive recruiting campaign mm -hmm. because if you have no students, then you know you don't need a college. Right. Uh, so that was a part that said, okay, being a recruiting coordinator for the University of Arkansas for football, I drew back on those mm -hmm. experience and my relationships throughout the United States of America that helped, you know, in 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 moving that initiative forward. Then I wanted to become, uh, you know, uh, financially responsible, and and you can do that when you have human capital because with those with resources comes with students, right. you know. But if you have to put the student first, if you worry about the money, mm -hmm. and you're not taking care of your students that's not good customer service, right, you right. know? And so, you know, to do that, and, and we didn't have facilities, mm -hmm. you know? So we had to clean up our facilities, and you know, and then we had to bring in, you know, faculty and staff and, and those type of people who bought into the vision and mission. See, Arkansas Baptist College, you know, mission is very unique in the fact it was started in 1884 by the sons and daughters of former slaves. Who Lance, I want to articulate, didn't have a high ACT score nor a high GPA, but they had a high want to and they desire education. Right. And so, you know, oftentimes test scores are not reflective on what your ability to achieve mm -hmm. actually is, but oftentimes, you know, we take a test score and we use that as a predictor and really it's an assessment. Right. And so it's so important. So, you know, when you look at the average test score of our students, you know, it, it, it was usually based on experience, mm -hmm. you know. So we, there, there are tons of students out there who have the capability that just needs opportunity. Mm -hmm. We gave them that and we grew our school from 150 to 1193 students in a period of six years. Right. We grew too fast. Okay. That yeah. was the problem. I see. Uh -huh. and, I saw, and, and we did not manage it very well mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, if I knew what I knew today mm -hmm. and the experience I learned from that is bigger is not better, mm -hmm. better is better. Right. But when you broke, you know, and you don't have a lot of resources, it's hard to say, well, let's take a qualitative approach mm -hmm. and let's make sure couldn't do that. Right. I know better now from my experiences. Mm -hmm. And so then we, you know, that was too big. Mm -hmm. We couldn't house everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have the residence hall to do that. Mm -hmm. And so when you grow, grow from, you know, 600 students to 1100 students, but you don't, you don't, you do not um, bring in more staff, mm -hmm. you know, more administrators, you know, you don't have that and you don't have a technology system to manage it, then you end up uh, things getting a little sloppy, right? You know, but it's a double-edged sword, you right. know, and so you have to look at wh you know which wh you know how wh how's it going to cut, mm -hmm. you know. So I learned, you know, that there's a process to managing growth better, and so if I ever got in that situation again, mm -hmm. I would do a better job of doing that. But when you're coming in and you have no students, right. and, and then and then you find you wake up one day and you have 1,100 students want to come, what are you going <laughs> to say? You know, we've never we never we've never been in that situation exactly. before. That was the most in the history of the school, right? You know, but that 
speaks to the aggressive camp uh, recruiting mm -hmm. campaign that we've done. And so we found that between 900 and 1,000 students, that's about where we need to be because that fills the dorms and right. that does that. So, but it was it was a learning experience that, you know, like I said, bigger is not always better. Better mm -hmm. is better. Mm -hmm. Well, right. So yeah. So you had a situation where you you met some key goals, mm -hmm. but you got a little far afield in some of them. And that uh, created some tough times oh, for, for you personally and professionally and your leadership team there. So that makes me wonder how you then lead in a situation where there's a lot of controversy, a lot of turmoil. Yeah. How do you keep your head up and how do you keep your team moving ahead? Yeah, be, to be totally transparent, mm -hmm. you know, tell the truth, right. you know, particularly when you know you hadn't done anything wrong. Right. You know, so contrary to what the what public opinion was, mm -hmm. I knew I have a, I never did anything wrong. Right. You know, it's just that we grew too fast and we didn't manage the growth effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so um, one thing I did, I, I, I learned though, that's probably the lesson that I share with people all the time is that the thing that I learned the most, I mean, the thing that, this, that sticks with me the most, Lance, is that, you know, when we had our cash flow shortage, and people were calling for their money, mm -hmm. okay? When that phone rang, answer it and tell them what your situation is. Right. Don't, not answer the phone, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, don't delay calling them back. Make the call first you don't want to make, so you get it out the way. Right, right. You know, because if you say, oh, I'll call, I sure don't want to talk to that person. Well, now that's hanging over you. Then mm -hmm. it was three or four, so hey, you call, yes, sir, how you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry. No, I don't have your money. Mm -hmm. What what can you say? Right. You know, so I became very humble mm -hmm. in that situation. To it, 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 I grew a lot. Mm -hmm. It strengthened me to say, no, sir. You know, people chewed me out a little bit. Well, you said you, um, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's leadership to say, I don't have it. And, and I had people say, you know, you always took my call. I appreciate you calling me back. You always responded to my email. Wasn't what I want to hear, right? But I never had to find you, right? You know, so I learned a lot about you know, you know, don't don't avoid conflict, mm -hmm. you know, don't avoid confrontation because you can't tell them what you want to hear. I grew so much in that, and that's one of the probably things that helped me become better because, at that point, you know, I always used to be a person that, that liked for people to you know to see me because they thought of what I was going to say. Well, man, when everybody was looking for me, they didn't like what I was saying then, right? right? You know, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. you don't, I thought you were going to have my money. Mm -hmm. No, no, I don't. And, you know, and it was a cash flow issue, it wasn't mm -hmm. a financial issue. Mm -hmm. You know, we were not getting our money on time. So you have vendors who need to be paid. Mm -hmm. So through that process, you know, I learned to have faith, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think it speaks to the fact that I was able to go and negotiate you know, a refinance of $30 million mm -hmm. based on what our financial situation was, mm -hmm. not our cash flow situation. Right. And I said, this will help improve our cash flow situation based on they saw the growth of the school. And so, man, you know, you, you can do that. So mm -hmm. that let that really reiterated that we were a good business investment. Right. Even though the public perception was that that we were a badly managed organization. Right. So how did you go about keeping the spirits of your team up? You've got an immediate staff that mm -hmm. is feeling this heat as well. So what was your message to them? Always meeting and said, hey, here's where we are. You know, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to be the last to be paid. You know, I said, you know, we're going to take care of, of, of everybody, you know, uh, that, that's on the lower tier. And then we'll work our way up and mm -hmm. we're going to do the very best we can. And I said, we're going to work through this. And then I said, and I'm, I'm not walking out, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, it, I, I, I call it, a, you know, we fumble, you know, mm -hmm. in football, you know, we got mm -hmm. hit in the back. You know, we wasn't expecting it. We got clipped. Right. You know, got knocked down. Unfortunately, we didn't get a flag thrown right. <laughs> for the people. So we, we didn't get a penalty and get right. moved up. But it was. And so, you know, to, to have that communication, to call a meeting with, with, the, with the school and say, here's where we are. You know, and my faith is what really brought me through and said, God's going to pull us through this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I never allowed for my faith, you know, to ever leave me. Right. You know, and for that, you know, when we got the, the, the refinance, that was part of it. And then, you know, I said, OK, we got a few other things. Accreditation. Let's get that work. You know, you do not leave in the middle of the battle. Mm -hmm. You complete the process. Now, if, you know, if they want to change leadership, the board had the right to do that. Mm -hmm. But I was not going to abandon the ship in the middle 
of the storm. Right. You know, so as we repositioned and, and, and got things, you know, in place, I knew that 10 years as a college president in, in the environment I was working in was, was, was quite a bit. And, and I, I, I uh, joke sometimes, I said, you know, the president of the United States, we term limit that individual That's for right. eight years for a reason. Mm -hmm. Well, they can print money and go into a deficit. I was broke for <laughs> 10 and a half. And, right. you know, so that was more than I could right. stand. <laughs> <laughs>